Hi everybody, this is Julian from RC. A little while ago, I did a deep dive video on model merging, and we looked at the different techniques implemented in the MergeKit open source library. Since then, a bunch of new methods have been added. So in this video, we're going to look at those new techniques that are now available. And specifically, we're going to study model breadcrumbs. And yes, they have funny names, uh, model stock and Della. And uh, as a refresher, we'll take a quick look at how you can do a managed model merging in RC Cloud. OK, let's get started. The techniques we're going to discuss today are implemented in MergeKit, which you can, of course, find on GitHub. And uh, in case you didn't know, the creator of uh, MergeKit is now working for RC. So we covered MergeKit in the first part of this deep dive. So I won't go through that again. Um, but if you keep going down here, yeah, you can see the list of methods. Okay, so in the first part of the deep dive, we covered model soups, slurp, task arithmetic, ties, dare, and pass through. Okay, so today we're going to do the latest one. So model breadcrumbs, model stock, and Della. The first technique we're going to discuss today is called model breadcrumbs. Uh, it was released at the end of last year. And it's an improvement on the task arithmetic technique, right? So remember in the task arithmetic technique, we would start from a base model, fine tune it on uh, a bunch of different um, data sets and different tasks, get a collection of fine tuned models. Then we would create the so-called task vectors. So uh, literally uh, subtracting the fine tuned weights in the base weights, getting those uh, differences, and then combining those differences. Okay, so breadcrumbs is another iteration on uh, on task arithmetic, which I'll call TA. Breadcrumbs starts in the same way. So first we compute a task direction, which is really the same thing as, as a task vector, um, by taking the fine-tuned weights uh, for each fine-tuned model and uh, subtracting the base weights. Okay, so we do that for all the fine-tuned models, right? And so as you can see here with those green and, and yellow and red weights, right? We get those uh, those differences. Okay, so that's an easy one. And then uh, where breadcrumbs differs from um, a TA is that we're going to um, ignore or mask a percentage of the of the weights right and as you can see in the middle we see the green and yellow and red distributions for those weights right um, and and we do this for for each layer we're gonna drop literally um, the tiny weights and the large weights right and we do this uh, according to uh, a couple of uh, hyperparameters called uh, beta, uh, beta and gamma Okay, so when we're setting the, the, the delta, right, the difference to zero here, this is really the same thing as um, ignoring the effect of fine tuning for uh, this particular parameter, right? Because if the difference between the, the fine tuned weights and the, the base weights, or the base weight, I should say, is zero, it really means uh, the fine tuned weight is equal to the base weight, right? So we zero out. Um, a fraction of the fine tuning and focusing on the outliers, right? And then um, we take the the resulting uh, the survivors pretty much, and uh, and we merge them, right? So we add all those um, survivor weights to the base model. Right, and as you can see on the right, then um, well, the, the base model gets updated with um, the different uh, fine-tuned variants in different ways because from one layer to the next, um, we took different decisions, and uh, and different weights uh, may have survived. Right, so that's the um, that's the basic idea: drop um, the tiny ones, drop the large ones according to those parameters. So how does that work? So the method generally outperforms uh, task vector, so task arithmetic. Uh, so with the same number of models, 
uh, it, it, it works uh, generally better. You will see some benchmarks in the paper. But what is more interesting, um, and that's clearly highlighted in the paper, is that this method scales better. Okay, so let me explain. If you're going to do task arithmetic uh, and you have, let's say, I don't know, maybe 100 tasks, right? Maybe you have 100 different computer vision data sets. So you would fine tune um, 100 models, okay, starting from the base model on those 100 data sets. So now you have your 100 variants. And, and now you want to combine them in a clever way. And generally what that means, of course, is you need to find the relative weights, right? When you merge um, the 100 uh, task vectors, maybe you want a little more of this one, a little less of that one. So they're not all equal parts, right? And so you have 100 hyperparameters to tweak. And I guess you could do maybe grid search, you could do different things. But I mean, you can see, you can see the problem, right? You can see that uh, finding the optimal, if there is a, such a thing, or at least a high performance set of hyperparameters for those 100 tasks, right, is going to be is going to be a problem. So that's uh, that's another problem that breadcrumbs solves because they show that the um, the hyperparameters that you pick to to merge the um, um, the masked uh, variants are very stable. So they did an experiment where they run hyperparameter optimization on 10 tasks. So finding, you know, beta and gamma, which would um, optimize accuracy for a certain evaluation set. And then they kept, they froze those hyperparameters and they started merging more and more tasks, right? All the way to 200 tasks. Okay, so, and, and they saw that the performance would keep going up, okay? Um, and, and so that's pretty cool because it means if you're working with a, a large number of different tasks, you don't have to do that crazy great search over that high number of tasks. You can actually optimize um, the, the, the accuracy on a limited set of tasks, right? Let's say five to 10, freeze the hyperparameters for merging, and then... Um, extend those are hyperparameters to a much, much larger uh, number of tasks, right? So I think particularly for computer vision, this is, uh, this is an interesting one, right? So another benefit, uh, and I think we mentioned this in the previous video, is that generally uh, merging also improves the performance of the fine-tuned models. So we have an example here where um, they fine-tuned uh, T5 base on four uh, glue tasks, so MRPC, RTE, et cetera, okay? And we can see the, the zero shot performance here, right? So for example, the, the, the base T5 model is doing 74.8 um, on MRPC. And then when we do uh, fine tuning specifically for this, uh, we get 87.9, right? So nice increase. But then when we start merging um, actually six other T5 models who, that have been trained on very different data sets like IMDB and so on, we see the accuracy on MRPC increasing, right? And uh, it's hard to say it's always the case, but it's often the case that merging um, a fine-tuned model with additional off-the-shelf models that have been trained on other data set will increase the accuracy for that particular for that particular data set, right? But I guess it helps the model generalize a little better, and uh, and we can see that here, right? We can see on on MRPC, uh, RTE, actually all four, COLA and SST2, uh, the performance of the fine tuned model goes up, right? Um, just because we merged some additional T5 models with some additional knowledge. Okay, so that's um, that's another reason to use model merging generally. Okay, so that's uh, that's what breadcrumbs are. Um, basically, um, it's uh, task arithmetic all over again, except we um, drop, we zero out uh, some of the outliers, right? The tiny ones, the large ones, 
and uh, and we see that this gives not only better models but also a more scalable way to merge a large number of models without having to do hyperparameter optimization again. All right. Okay, let's move on to the next method, which is model stock. So model stock is a completely different beast. Uh, it's nothing like uh, TA or breadcrumbs or the other techniques. This is purely math. Um, and, uh, and it's very clever, actually. But it makes the, um, the research paper a little more difficult to read. So yeah, uh, took a little more coffee and, and time for me to, to get through it. But I, I think I understood the uh, most of it, and uh, and hopefully I can give you the intuition and not betray uh, the authors on this one. So we're still trying to sell. So we're still trying to solve the same problem, right? Um, we have a collection of fine-tuned models, and we want to um, merge them in the in in the most optimal way, right? To optimize accuracy over uh, certain tasks and certain data sets. So here, what they what they did is um, this. They, uh, so here's what they did. They they started analyzing um, the fine tune weights, okay, and looking at how those uh, fine tune weights, so those tensors, okay. I'm sorry, I'll try to minimize jargon. How those tensors were different from the, the, the tensors in the base model. Okay, so imagine a layer, uh, we have tensors in there, we run fine tuning, so the, the weights uh, get updated. How does that tensor, that fine tuned tensor look compared to the original one? And if we fine tune many models from the same base model, are there common properties between those fine-tuned tensors, right? So model, uh, you know, variant A, variant B, variant C, look at the tensors for um, that same layer. Are they completely different or do they have something in common? Okay. So as it turns out, uh, they have something in common. And, and so the way they put it is, you know, fine-tuned weights uh, with different random seeds reside on a very thin shell layer-wise. Okay. So research speak um, the intuition if we if we think of that problem in 3d okay imagine we have 3d um, uh, tensors okay so vectors vectors in a 3d space okay so the vector for the base model is going to be you know somewhere in that space and then we're going to fine tune it a few times now uh, let's say three times Okay, so we get, uh, I don't know, W1, W2, W3, okay, the three fine-tuned vectors um, from that base vector. And W1, W2, W3 um, point to um, a, thin, a thin surface, which we could call a sphere. So let's say we have a, a vector W0, that's the base model, the pre-trained model, and we fine-tune it twice, right? So W1, W2, okay? Well, W1 and W2 will point to that sphere. And I'm putting big quotes uh, around that because obviously here we're looking at 3D and those tensors are uh, much, much higher dimension than that. But that's the intuition, right? So you can actually, uh, you can actually see that if you fine tune the base model a lot um, for a given layer and the, the tensor the tensors for all those variants will actually point, quote unquote, to a common surface. Okay, so that's the that's the ba the basic idea. So now you could say, well, so if I want to maximize the the accuracy, right? Let's say I've got um, you know one hundred of those fine tuned vectors, and they kind of point at the same at that common surface. Which one of those um, gives me the best accuracy for um, the particular for the merge task, right? Uh, well, you could say it's the average, right? It's what we do when we do, uh, you know, when we run uh, model soups or when we average the the task vectors in um, in task arithmetic. We're doing exactly that. We're taking the average 
of all those um, fine-tuned models. So here, what, what would that mean? Well, it means, you know, and that's observation too, it means, uh, it means going closer to the center of that sphere, okay? So if we average W1 and W2 and W3 and W4, you know, we'll get closer to, uh, to the center, okay? So the intuition here is the, the vector that points um, to the center of the sphere is probably the optimal vector, okay? And, um, and, and they show that it's actually the case uh, both for uh, in-distribution prediction, so predicting on data that is similar to uh, the distribution of the training data and, and out of distribution prediction as well, right? So data that is different from the training data. So I won't go deeper into, into the math, but that's really the idea, right? Uh, the, the realization that those fine-tuned vectors have something in common, right? And yes, they point at different bits and pieces, but if you go to the center of that surface, that's probably where you can maximize accuracy. Okay? So, again, uh, when we do model soups, it's, I guess that's why model soups work, because as we average all those models, we get closer to the center. But, um, there's another way to look at it. You could say, well, maybe I can just find, maybe I can just compute the coordinates of the center and I, maybe I don't need a hundred um, fine-tuned variants to do that, right? So instead of averaging uh, fine-tuned models, can I just take two, uh, let's say two or three models, uh, right? So W1, W2, and W3, and uh, isn't that enough? to find a really, really good approximation of the center? Um, well, that's exactly what model stock is, right? So the, the, the consequence is obviously it's much, much more compute efficient because you don't need to, um, well, you don't need to have a huge collection of fine-tuned models to begin with, um, and you don't need to average all of them, right? So even if you have a large collection, um, you can just pick two, and uh, and you can just find the um, the optimal. Um, uh, well, you can just and you can just find the center <laughs> uh, of uh, of those two models, and that's that's really what it is, right? It's really a math operation, so it's not just averaging; it's just it's geometry. It's literally geometry, and you can look at the uh, at the paper for a deeper explanation. Okay, I'll stick to to the intuition here. So you can run model stock during training, okay? And, uh, and that's actually what you see here. Those uh, transparent spheres are different um, training step, right? So you could say, okay, after Epoch 1, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to merge already. And after Epoch 2, I'm going to merge again, etc. cetera. And, um, and as it turns out, what they call periodic merging uh, during fine-tuning um, is an even better way to find uh, the center of, um, of that sphere. But you can also do, and I guess that's what we would do in MergeKit, uh, we would do post-training merging, okay? So we just grab um, a couple of models and, uh, and merge them that way. And we can see here in, the, in that benchmark that, uh, and they, they use a computer vision example, they show that uh, they, they get the, the same accuracy as uh, just averaging. And, um, and they're also more, the resulting model, the merge model, is also more resistant to uh, out of distribution um, prediction. So it's just, it generalizes better, okay? So that's a hard one to understand, but I think if you, if you, if you stick to, uh, I mean, feel free to go through the math, but um, I, I think if you stick to the intuition, which is, you know, those fine-tuned vectors have something in common, which is they point to a common surface, right? And so that surface has a center. And we, if we have a couple of points, we can find the center. And we don't have to run averaging over a large number of models. We just need, let's say, two models to find it. So um, it's, um, it's just as good, even a little better. And from a computation perspective, it's much more efficient. Okay, 
All right, well, this one is uh, a bit of a mouthful. I'll, I'll give you that. Let's move on to the last technique I wanted to cover today, and this one is called DELA. As you would expect, DELA is an acronym. It stands for Drop and Rescale via Sampling with Magnitude. Those names are getting crazy. And it's a bit similar to the TIES method, which we studied in, uh, in the previous video. So if you remember TIES, um, some, some steps uh, will, be, will be familiar. But there's a, there's a major difference, right? We'll see what the, the secret sauce is. Okay, it starts the same as usual. Um, so we compute the delta parameters for each fine-tuned model. So, you know, fine-tuned weights minus base weight, okay? So we've seen this a number of times. And on the, um, on the, on the illustration here, uh, you see uh, we have three fine-tuned models. We have one for math, one for code, and a, a language model, right? And then they actually, we'll see in the benchmarks, they actually use the same as in the in the TIES paper, okay? So we fine-tuned um, our base model three times for this. Okay, and then we compute the deltas. All right, so far, so good. Next, we're going to drop um, a percentage of those values, okay, of those weights. And when I mean drop, I mean uh, zero out, okay, just like we saw earlier. So zeroing out means ignoring, uh, zero, zeroing, so zeroing out the delta means ignoring the effect of fine tuning, right? Uh, pretend that weight in the fine tuned model uh, stayed the same as in the base model. That's, uh, that's what it means. So the, the novelty here is how we drop those. So for each layer, um, we look at uh, each parameter and we assign it a drop probability, okay? Because we're going to drop those parameters in a prob probabilistic way. We're not going to just, you know, drop the, drop the axe and say, okay, anything bigger than this, you know, dies and anything smaller than this dies. Uh, we're li literally going to, you know, flip a coin every time. So the probability is inversely proportional to the magnitude. So very tiny parameters have a high probability of getting axed and large parameters have a lower probability of getting axed, okay? So we just compute this and then for each parameter with that drop probability, uh, we literally flip a coin and we decide whether to keep it or not, okay? So when we flip a coin, we have two outcomes, right? heads or tails, and hopefully it's 50% each. Here, it's different um, because um, the drop probability is what we assigned just in the previous step, right? So if P is the drop probability, it's, you know, P and one minus P. So if you have a very high probability of getting dropped, you know, well, you have a very high chance that the coin will land on the, on the drop uh, side of things, right? So um, that's a Bernoulli uh, distribution for you math heads. Okay, so we run that process, okay? And again, it's a probabilistic process. So it is possible that um, a parameter with a very high drop probability doesn't get dropped. And it's also possible that um, a parameter with a very low probability gets dropped, okay? That's the, I guess that's the beauty of it. Okay, so once we've run that step, uh, we have uh, pruned, right? And they call this algorithm uh, magprune. We have pruned a number of parameters, okay? So if it's dropped, it's set to zero. And like I said, this is equivalent to ignoring the, uh, the effect of the fine-tuning job for this parameter, okay? So do this for all the, um, all the parameters in all the layers uh, for each of your fine-tuned variants. So in the elect step, um, we pick some of the weights for merging and we'll ignore some of the others. And this is exactly the same uh, sign election technique as in the ties method, which we saw in the previous, previous video, right? So for each set of parameters across the different fine-tuned models, uh, we look at the dominant direction and, um, and we drop uh, again, uh, the the parameters that are not going in that direction. Okay, so if we add up, let's say, the three parameters for 
the three identical parameters for you know math and code and um, and lm and the result is uh, is positive then any parameter that is negative uh, gets dropped okay so it's the sign election uh, same again same sign election technique as we've seen in ties okay and finally once uh, we've done this election uh, we fuse right so we just take all the survivors and uh, we average them and we have the merge model so as you can see this is almost the same as ties but the way we pick um, uh, the way we we pick or eliminate <laughs> depending um, the parameters uh, is quite different here it's a probabilistic um, mechanism and as it turns out it's working very well okay so um, that's a lot of benchmark here so let's try and, and break it down so at the top we see a uh, single right so that this is the performance of the language model the math model and the code model on their different benchmarks right uh, so we can see you know alpaca eval or the language modeling gsmak for math and mbpp which is a python uh, programming data set okay and then we start merging the models two by two and then all three together and which is exactly what ties did by the way and they again they use the same models so for example we see the language model plus math uh, merge um, is where you know Dell is doing really well so you know it's doing 81.8 on alpaca and with a, a good average so it's performing very well it's also doing very well on lm plus code okay um it's not doing particularly well it's okay i guess but it's not winning on math plus code okay um and it is winning on um, on the three the combination of the three models right so we can see different things right feel free to pause the video and look at the numbers take your time right so we see Della is generally doing well um and uh and outperforming uh uh, the previous techniques, so TA is task arithmetic, and DARE and TIES, right? All three we covered in the previous video. So it is certainly uh, an improvement. Um, we also see that um, TIES, and these are the blue highlights, TIES is doing very well on math. So I'm um, not sure why, but that's a good one to uh, keep in mind, right? If you're trying to merge math models, um, you definitely want to try ties because something in there is uh, is working very well. So maybe it's just for that model, um, but I don't know. Keep that in mind. And another thing we see again is that merging improves uh, the um, the accuracy of the base model on individual tasks. So for example, go all the way to the top, you see the language model is scoring 80.8 .8 on Alpaca eval. But when you merge LM plus math, um, now we get 81.8, .8, okay? So as you can see, uh, and we see this on other, on other tasks as well. So, so merging is not like, um, you know, it's like, uh, well, it's a default. It's a reasonable default, and we get, you know, we get okay results on all the tasks. It's in many cases we actually get better results, right? Uh, the merging operation is, is I guess, helping the merge model um, generalize better, and uh, and you will very, very often see this, um, right? And we see that again on. Uh, on the math model, right? The math model on GSM 8K is scoring 63.5. And you can see all the blue highlights uh, with ties, uh, we get better results, right? And uh, for Della, we also, yeah, except for the last uh, three, uh, the last uh, big combo, uh, we see better results too, right? So again, another, um, another uh, proof that um, that merging um, is not just you know a quick hack. It's not just a it's not just a way to save on fine tuning or reduce the compute um, budget. Although it certainly does that, it's also a way to help the models get better on the individual task. Okay, and that's that's very valuable. 
in a way you get the best of both worlds, right? You get to you get to build um, high quality models that outperform on individual tasks, and they can also do all those tasks in the same model. So, um, in terms of even inference complexity and inference cost, you know, you get to do more and better with a single model endpoint, right? So that's pretty cool. Okay, um, so um, let's just take a quick look at model merging in RC Cloud. So the reason why I'm showing you this is because the RC Cloud has a free tier, okay? Meaning you can use it for free, okay? And merging is actually free and it's unlimited, okay? So you can create an account on RC Cloud and um, you can run your merges on uh, on that platform unlimited for free right instead of uh, you know setting your uh, your laptop or your your server on fire okay and of course there are plenty of other cool features on RC cloud and again I won't repeat myself I go uh, go and check out uh, the the videos I did on this but this is really worthwhile right um, and it's super simple to use right you sign up okay I won't show you how to do this you can get this and uh, you go to the merging tab create merging uh, you give your uh, you give your merge a name uh, you uh, you pass the yaml file uh, the config file for merge kit create the merge launch it bam okay and of course we have a python sdk to do this and i'll put all the links in the video description all right so that's why i wanted to remind you that you can do all this stuff for free on rc cloud so um, please create an account and get merging. Okay, this is really what I wanted to uh, show you today. So hopefully your brain didn't explode. Um, I didn't go into the math. Thank me for that. Uh, if you are interested in the math, please go there and, and read the papers. They're, they're pretty interesting. And um, I'll see you soon with uh, more content. There are some even more advanced techniques uh, and, uh, and we'll cover them too soon. Until then, my friends, you know what to do. Keep rocking.